Find my treasure the one who may understand it. Last month I did a video on Blackbeard, the true historical pirate legend Blackbeard, the Blackbeard that we know and the similarities between them. This month I'm covering Roger and his pirate inspiration. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about Olivier Lavasseur, a French pirate. I have an obsessive personality. Hi, I read a book, a nonfiction book that was kind of pirate adjacent and that sparked an obsession, as these things do, with learning all that I can about the true pirates that lived and had legends, as well as their connections to the One Piece pirates, because there are many. But before we dig into his legend, a shout out to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare has classes for photography, film and video editing and illustration, but it also has a lot of career focused classes as well. I've been focused on two types of classes, one to meet my personal goals and one to meet my professional goals. Y'all know I've been working on learning Spanish. Skillshare has a load of Spanish courses and I've started one, which is helping me to learn in a different format and challenge me in a different way. But I've also started the class Everyone is Creative, five exercises to reconnect with your inner creativity because video making is a very creative process process and I'm constantly pushing myself to be more creative with this channel so having exercises to help me kind of unlock that creativity has been really cool and a goal like being more creative is a bit broad so having these classes helps to start out small and build and the first thousand people to use the link in my description will get one month free of Skillshare thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video Olivier Lavasseur was raised by his father after his mother died in childbirth his father raised him to be a great navigator and to understand the ways of the sea and of sailing. However, his profession of choice was an architect, and that's what he would continue to be until the Spanish War began, when he received a letter of mark and became a privateer. Privateer is a private person or vessel that engages in maritime warfare under a commission of war. Essentially, it was a pirate under the crown. Olivier was a privateer under the French government, and so he participated in the war by essentially committing acts of piracy, but only against enemy ships. This was commonplace during this war, and we don't have a lot of records on Olivier's exploit as a privateer, but he, like many privateers, developed a taste for the work. And so when the war ended and the many different governments abolished the privateer or stopped the privateer name and called all of these men back to their country and to return their ships and to go back to normal, day in normal lives. They didn't want to return to their old careers and instead just became full-fledged pirates. Olivier was one of these. Olivier joined the crew of Captain Benjamin Hornigold. Now, this is one of my favorite things about doing this research and making these videos is, again, Oda pulls from multiple pirates' legends and characters to build his own characters up. So Edward Newgate, or Whitebeard, is based off of multiple different pirates, one of which I think has to be Hornigold. First of all, Whitebeard's mustache looks like a horn. I thought it was a horn when I was first reading the series. But also he took several legendary pirates under his wing and made them cruise to his ship and they then went off to have their own legends. Hornigold had Olivier in his crew early on in his career, but he also had the legendary Blackbeard in his crew early on in his career and really taught them both a lot about the world of piracy. Anyway, he and Hornigold worked side by side to capture ships, looting, and holding people for ransoms. Olivier developed the nickname La Bousse, or the Buzzard, because he became known for his speed and ruthlessness. After several years working under Captain Hornigold, he and Olivier parted ways, and Olivier started working under Captain Samuel Bellamy. Bellamy is known as the most wealthy pirate. He was also known as the Prince of Pirates, as well as known for his kindness. Pirates back in the day were ruthless. To include Olivier, he was ruthless, and that's why he got the nickname that he did. And we'll see more of that in this video. But Bellamy was known for his kindness. So Olivier and Bellamy worked together for a while. They became good friends. And when they eventually parted ways and Olivier became captain of his own ship and eventual fleet, they parted ways as friends. 
Again, Olivier was ruthless and was known for it. He had many exploits where he captured and pillaged many ships, but one of his more notable exploits was when he captured a slave ship, took all 140 slaves onto his own ship, and then downed the slave ship crew and all to perish. He then abandoned those 140 slaves on an island and then was chased by a Portuguese ship where he lost several crew members in the firefights, but finally got away only to then go in another direction and get caught up in a storm and lose his entire ship and almost all of his crew. The ship was down by the storm. About 80 men died and only Olivier and a few of his crewmates were able to get away. Olivier did end up stealing a new ship, building up his crew again, and then teaming up with Captain Edward England, which again, talk about his ruthlessness. Edward England was known to be a kind and compassionate pirate. He tended to favor mercy on those that he was up against. There was another firefight that happened between them and another ship. They lost several crew members and Edward England wanted to uh, show mercy on them and let them go, but both Olivier and the rest of the crew said no. We're tired of your kindness. We don't want that. And so they marooned him and uh, voted on a new captain, John Taylor. And now we get to the part where Olivier's legend meets the story that we know and love. So Olivier and Taylor became comrades and started capturing ships and looting together. There was one ship of note <laughs> that they found after it had been damaged in storms and so it was anchored and very vulnerable. So. Olivier, as smart as he was, decided to hoist white flags, naval flags, uh, so that they could get in close. And then when they got close, he cut the flag and hoisted his black flag and then, and then captured the ship. So dramatic. Anyway, this ship belonged to the Bishop of Goa. The ship was called Our Lady Cape and it was loaded with dozens of boxes of gold, bars of gold and silver, diamonds, pearls, silk, art and religious objects to include the fiery cross of Goa. It took dozens of men to carry all of this treasure off the ship. I think I read that it took three men to carry the, the fiery cross on its own. It was a really big haul. They split it between the men and each man, over 50 men, walked away with 42 diamonds each, as well as at least 50,000 pounds worth of gold and silver. The captains got a little bit higher haul and Olivier himself got the golden cross. After this, the two captains retired. Olivier actually went into hiding and we don't know what happened to him for several more years where he went, what he did, but we do know that in 1724, he sent a negotiator to try to get him amnesty. Amnesty was a pardon extended by the government to officially forgive certain people who were subject for trial, but have not been convicted. This was essentially several different governments' goal of kind of bringing back the amount of piracy that had continued after the war ended, trying to say, okay, we, we won't convict you for all your crimes, just please be civilians again. <laughs> Olivier wanted this. He wanted the amnesty that was extended towards pirates, but he had found the one piece and the government wanted some of that back. So specifically for him, the response was, give me some of my gold back and just give me a portion of it and then I'll give you this amnesty. And Olivier said, no, I want it all. And so he stayed in hiding. Eventually he was captured near Fort Dauphin in Madagascar. He was interrogated, but refused to give up the secret of where his treasure was. And instead, as he was led to the gallows, he wore a necklace around his neck that had a cryptogram of 17 lines. Right before he was executed, he threw it into the crowd shouting, find my treasure, the one who may understand it. This kicked off many people trying to decode this cryptogram. This cryptogram is still in existence. Historians have confirmed that this paper is from the time that, not Roger, I almost said Roger, that Olivier was hanged. And since then, many people have attempted to decode these 17 lines and find his treasure. Still hasn't been found yet. There is one family of note that have dedicated their lives to this quest. Reginald Cruz Wilkins 
Simmons spent his entire life trying to decode it and feels that he has cracked the code, well, felt that he had cracked the code. He's since passed and his son, John, has taken up the quest. He's found carvings on the island that he believes that it's located on that have cryptic messages on them. And they believe that these messages on the rocks were written by Olivier. The problem is that it's officially off limits and he's not allowed to dig there. Many people also credit Henry Avery, also known as Henry Avery, as an inspiration for Roger because he gained the title of the Pirate King. And while Olivier was known for his ruthlessness, my goodness, Henry would give him a run for that title. He was only a pirate for two years, but in that time, he too got one of the biggest pirate halls in history. And he did what most pirates were unable to do. He got away with it. He was never captured. He went into hiding and he was never seen again. Assumedly, he got to live for some period of time in great riches. Really, the biggest similarities that I saw between him and Roger were that he was known as one of the first global manhunts in the world. Everybody was after him. And naturally, because he was known as the King of the Pirates. But again, not that many similarities otherwise. So I like to think of Henry Every more as the inspiration for the title of the Pirate King that anyone can get, especially because Every too inspired a lot of people into piracy to be able to do what he did, to be able to make off with the great treasure and then disappear. So maybe Every was the inspiration for the title, the elusive title of the Pirate King, but really I think Olivier was the inspiration for Roger. So the relations of Olivier's legend and how this connects to the story that we love are obvious, I think. We have a pirate that was legendary and had one of the greatest halls of all time. He remained elusive to the government and stayed in hiding, stayed on the run for a long time before being captured. And before he was executed, he shouted a message to the world saying, go find my treasure. And as of yet, no one has found it, but many have set off to try, to try to decode the messages that were left on paper and on rocks. And Luffy is one of those people. He's one of us, one who heard of the legend of the One Piece, of the treasure that was left behind and is on his quest to find it. And I really love that Luffy is essentially a stand-in for us, for anyone that has the potential to go seek out that treasure, to decode the messages and find it. When I did one of these videos for Blackbeard, there were a lot of small similarities that we could draw, like his appearance. I don't have stuff like that in this particular video, but I've been researching Anne Bonnie and there are so many similarities, both in appearance and in personality and in legend to Jewelry D. Bonnie, and that one, that's so fun. But I've also been researching Black Bart, who is who Bartholomew me Kuma, Kuma was largely based on, and just loads of pirates. Man, it's so fun to go down this rabbit hole. I've been having the best time. So I hope you like these style of videos because as long as y'all enjoy them and as long as y'all wanna watch them, I will happily keep making them. So let me know who you want to see next if you're interested in learning more about historical pirates. I'll do the research and I'll just tell you and we can draw the similarities together. I'm also about to start Dante's Inferno, which was a large inspiration for the arc, Impel down. I'm super excited about that. If you like that kind of sim that kind of correlation as well, Oda's inspirations or o Oda's story and literature. I just did one on Don Quixote and how that is related to Dress Rosa and the Don Quixote family. Check out my Patreon if you want weekly chapter reactions. I do them over there. Or if you don't, then I do monthly chapter discussions on break weeks. Anyway, I post videos every Monday and Friday on this channel, Tuesdays and Thursdays on my review channel. I'll see you again soon. Bye.